Hey everyone, we are live. Welcome A-listers. Um, Bo, of course, wanted to be here, but he's like, you got this. <laughs> Go get him, babe. Uh, he's actually prepping for our event next week. And that's one of the things that I do for him is make sure his schedule's clear so he can focus and really prepare to deliver a great virtual experience. So the whole team's getting ready for that. It's exciting. If you're coming, please put it in the chat. I wanna hear if you're coming to the 3J. I also wanna hear what you're most excited about. Um, also, I really hope that you guys enjoyed this Leading with Story series. It was um, just really exciting to put together. Uh, if, you know, to bring in the people that we love, that we have at our events, that we have, you know, training and coaching our mastermind members throughout the year and bring them to you and bring their content and their expertise. So just Joan is just one of my favorite people, um, so nurturing and just so intuitive about um, people's emotions and story and where they're stuck and and really understands the importance of finding that narrative. So I just, I hope you guys loved Joan. Of course, Mary just is always incredible with her story coaching and her structure and what she's able to do with our mastermind members after just two hours on the phone is like mind boggling. They The stories are brilliant. You guys have seen some of them. We posted them here and I just, couldn't say enough about Mary's talents and uh, we love having her on the team. And of course, Coach Colleen, who we love. Um, I actually, uh, Colleen and I have just become just closer over the years. We decided to put an event together uh, called Story to Stage. It's for only for our Mastermind members. And um, what we do is we, you know, they're trained just all year by Bo and really figuring out their story and their vision and where they're headed and then Colleen and I, and my part, you know, we've got Mary there, we've got Gina there. We really take them through the process of finding opportunities to share that vision and that story and connect with more people and get their message out there. So it's been fun to just really, you know, connect and put our heads together and figure out how much value we can bring and all the experience that we've had. Colleen, as a, a fairly new speaker and train trainer, and then me with all this experience with Bo and bringing that to, to our clients. So just love Colleen so much. And I hope that was a great uh, training for you. And of course, Jean-Louis, our favorite, just love him and have been um, you know, on the road, touring with him, driving around in a minivan, trying to find dinner in Texas, <laughs> going to barbecue, um, you know, been in New York with him. And of course, just all the, the years and years of rehearsals that we went through. So um, just an amazing team. And last, but hopefully not least, uh, I am here to finish up the Leading with Story series. So um, what I really wanna get into today is something that Bo talks about a lot. And he always says that everyone needs a Dawn. Everyone needs a Dawn. And people are like, wait, how do I find that Dawn? But what if my spouse doesn't wanna be a Dawn? Um, you know, I'm just, I just really haven't found that person that really wants to fight for me. And I wanted to talk a little bit about what that, what my role looks like in our, in, in our business, but also with Bo and I in our relationship and with our family. And then talk a little bit about, you know, where, where you guys can find a Dawn or, or the best way to attract that person. Um, so one of the things that I feel like just from the beginning, when I saw Bo, Right when you know, I encouraged him to write that play. Um, he, I would put like sticky notes all over the TV that said, "Don't turn me on, just go write." Uh, I went and I took his um, his script. So he had written, he'd actually written everything on yellow pads. And I was like, "Well, we can't use this. Like, how are we gonna? This isn't a script. <laughs> like, we need to make copies." So I, I went over to my dad's office, who has a roofing company of of all things, and I found the secretary and I said, "Help us type this. This is the format we need it in." And that was really how we came up with, with the script. Um, so, you know, from encouraging him to write to really creating an environment for him to succeed, getting him the script, and then of course showing up to every single rehearsal, watching what he was creating and how powerful the story was is what attracted me to fight for that story. And, you know, just his vision was so clear and the story was just, you, you couldn't say no to it. 
Um, so I just kind of fell into this role. I was an actress and fell into this role of a producer and really a Dawn and fighting for Bo. Um, so it was just, it was an amazing time for us. We had just gotten married. We were struggling. We didn't have any money. It was just, it was challenging, but we knew that everything we had was going to go into this one man show. Everything we had, we were going to fight no matter what. And nobody, I wasn't going to let anybody say no to us. So it was, uh, it was a, a powerful time. Um, you know, sometimes we wish we could go back to that time. And uh, it was just, it, it was, you know, so, so much, so emotional and um, just ups and downs, but we learned so much from that time. And, and I think that's why Bo's able to share so much of what he does on stage with you guys um, to really create that path for yourselves. And the other thing, you know, I mean, obviously just fighting for his dream and then just believing it. I mean, believed so much in what he wanted to create and that it would lead to something just so big. Um, watching people see that show and hear that story and come backstage and the things that they would share with us, um, you know, were really touching and emotional. And, you know, I, I, when I first had this idea, like Bo wasn't a speaker, he was a performer, but we would be, we would do these Q and A's after Runt of the Litter and people would stay for so, like the show was 90 minutes. People would stay for an additional 90 minutes just to listen to Bo answer questions. And that's you, you couldn't deny it. Uh, and then I said, why well, don't this is maybe we can do something. What, what is this? Is this, you know, speaking? Is he a trainer? Is he a teacher? And then it, it really evolved from those Q and A's um, and just really seeing the audience respond to him and his ability to um, put words and express what he had been through, whether it was from being a father to a performer, to an ex NFL athlete, what it was like on the field, off the field, the transition, he was really able to, to teach people through those stories. And uh, that's why the question and answer sessions were so powerful. Um, it was just really his kind of start at becoming a coach and becoming a speaker. So that, and then um, of course, just the environment um, that we created together and that I really helped him with to make sure that he was succeeding, whether it was in rehearsals, whether it was, you know, keeping, you know, things just locked down at the house because I knew he was writing. I think one time when he was working on the screenplay, we sent him up, we have this little, you probably saw we were on vacation with our kids in Bass Lake and it's this little cabin. And uh, we go, you go up to the cabin, you need to finish the script. Like you're getting too distracted. We've got too much. So, uh, you know, just understanding what he needs to succeed and then making sure that I create that environment for him, whether it's in our home or outside of our home or in an office, like we are here. Um, just really giving him that time to, to get away and focus on what he needs to create. And then of course, um, my favorite part uh, of really what I do to be Bo's Dawn and what makes me Dawn is finding opportunities for him. Um, I am a true salesperson, networker. I love to connect people and find opportunities for anyone, whether it's Bo or our clients or my hairdresser or a best friend. I love connecting people and making sure that they are have every opportunity to succeed and are with the right people in the right opportunities. And it's just one of my favorite things. So you know, I fight for him, I believe in him, I create the environment, and then I find opportunities. And that is, a, you know, those are really just at the, at the, if I'm gonna just streamline it, that's what I do and that's what I do best. So, you know, as you're thinking about that person, you know, make sure that they have a few of those skills to do that or that they, you know, that they believe enough in your vision, in your story to fight for it like I fought for Bose. Um, I think that's why, the whole leading with your story is so critical and why we took you through this series is you have to be able to share you, the, the vision of where you're going, the story of where you're going so that you can get people to follow you and you can attract that dawn that will fight for that vision. 
So um, I want to hear a little bit more in the chat about your vision. Um, you know, who's fighting for you? Just share that. And then we'll open it up for some Q&A, of course. And, um, you know, you can really just ask me anything. And, and uh, hopefully I'll give you a little insight into how we run things. But, you know, not only do I do all of that for Bo, but I've also, as the kids have grown, um, environment, giving them op and finding opportunities for them is really um, something that I love doing. So, you know, for example, you know, we have this online school, right? We've got these kids in virtual learning. Uh, they're, they, my kids are on, on, on their devices from 8 a.m. to 3 o'clock. So one of the things, and I just picked up the phone, I called the principal and I said, look, Axel has dreams, He's training his butt off. This, this quarantine has been a blessing in disguise. Uh, the coaches that he's been able to work with and have access to, uh, there's no traffic. We're getting back and forth to trainings, you know, with, with, with uh, no obstacles in the way. And I want to continue that for him. If he's not going to be in class, he's a very social kid. So I would never take that away from him if it was in person. But I was like, look, we got to get this kid off the computer. He's got to continue his workouts. What can we do? And, you know, he's out of school at 1230. So every day he has the opportunity to be finished with his main, you know, main classes and then take off for some workouts and to continue what we've done. And if he's not going to be on the field right now, we're going to make sure that he keeps training, keeps challenging himself and really living into that dream of where he wants to go. So that's an example of just, you know what, I'm just going to ask, let's just call the school and see what they say. The worst they can say is no. So, you know, girls are different. My girls are both on till three. Um, Eloise is super academic. Lila, is an, it's, a new, it's a new school for her. So I feel like she needs a little bit of that um, community and engagement and getting to know people. So that's just kind of like the difference. I look at each kid and see what they need. Um, Eloise, of course, you guys, is just an incredible chef. And this quarantine has been, you know, for her, amazing. She's just had so much time, whether it's a quick break, lunch, um, finishing by four with, with all her schoolwork to, to start creating some dinners that are new and different, um, taking, going to the farmer's market every weekend. Uh, we've also, um, you know, we, there was, like I said, there was no traffic and I was like, let's go eat at this restaurant. Let's go try this chef. So I know what in like fuels her and gets her excited about cooking and learning more. And um, this, that's an example of just what I've done for Eloise. I, I, last year we went up to Portland and I put her in. My best friend is a James Beard award-winning pastry chef. And I said, Kim, we're coming up, we're getting on a plane and Eloise is gonna be in that bakery <laughs> like every morning. So, and it was such a good experience. Um, and, uh, you know, really just giving her the opportunities. So, fighting for her vision, fighting for her dream, fighting for her stories, believing in it, creating that environment, and then finding the opportunities for her to succeed. Um, so, you know, I just think it's, 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 it, it really comes down to being clear about that. So if my kids, Lila still, I guess, is a little bit unclear about exactly where she's headed. Um, She's our third, so you guys know what happens sometimes with third children. So I probably have to like rein it in a little bit with her and be a little tougher. Uh, but Eloise and Axel have always been very clear about where they're going. And so it's easier for me to fight for them. And I think that's the biggest thing with you guys. Um, you know, make sure that you're crystal clear on your vision so that you can attract that dawn or uh, it makes it easy for somebody like me to fight for that vision. So that's one of the big things that um, I wanted to talk about. And uh, let's see, do we wanna, do we wanna, are we getting some questions? We need to remind you guys to put some questions in the chat. We're getting some. Okay. Um, let me see what else. So I wanna also mention um, just how important it is to, to create, obviously it's me. So when Bo and I just started, it was just, Bo and I. So we didn't have a team and I was kind of running around and doing all these things. And one of the, one of a really, a really big moment in our business that shifted a lot for us. And that was because 
I had taken on so much because we were the small business. We were growing so quickly that I wasn't, we had, Bo and I have this amazing connection. So we can, we're on the same page. He always has to check in with me creatively. We really have to, um, we really can, can support each other and figure out like, okay, this is best. This is best for our business. This is best for our company. And what was happening is we were, we were doing our events and I was doing what I love to do, which was produce. So I'm running around with this clipboard and this headset and I'm upstairs in the light booth. I didn't, I'm not sure if you guys heard the stories, but I used to run all the lights and sound for run to the litter for years. Like it's me up there in the light booth, like pushing all the buttons. Um, so of course, when the event started, that's my role. I did that. I did everything. But I was, but Bo would be backstage and he's like, does anyone know where Dawn is? Like we're on the walkie and they're like, Bo needs Dawn. And I, I was like, tell him I'm busy. Like I'm running the show. I've got all this stuff going on. And we really lost that magic between us, that partnership. And we had some great coaching from um, just a business mentor of ours. And I was actually out of position because I was doing all these tasks and I wasn't there to support Bo, which is what created all this just magic and production and creativity and support. That was all gone now because I was busy doing little tasks. So I really learned to create a team behind us um, so that it was me supporting Bo and we still had that partnership and that relationship. But then my team could do more of the daily tasks or event things, the details, the registration. I can hire someone to do the lights and sound. And then I was able to be there for Bo, which is why we were able to be so successful before. So sometimes, even when you're looking at your, your vision, who supports that, who your Dawn is, you also wanna make sure that there's this great team behind all that. It could just be one person. When we first started, it was me and Bo and this, this girl, Jen, and it was like just the three of us. And, you know, and then slowly but surely, we started to outsource, find people that were really, really great at their positions, bring them on the team. We have some people that are employees and some people that are contractors that come in just for really specialized events or trainings or campaigns. Um, but that's really, really helped. And I've been able to do what I do best and focus on Bo, focus on the opportunities and really focus on fighting for him. Um, so that, but it was hard. It was hard to let go of the control. Uh, I know, you know, there's probably a lot of, of women out there that, that can really relate to that. I think we want to be there for everything. We want to control everything. We want to, we don't want to ask for help. We want to run the show. Um, but then you, you in all of trying to do all of that, you really lose what's what makes you great, and 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 that that mama bear that Bo talks about, and that ability to fight for your family and for your kids and for your husband and for your business. So if if that's connecting to you, and you go, you know what, I am. I'm like trying to do too much. Um, you know, I even have one of like my best tips for for women. Um, if you're listening uh, to this, like, and you're relating to it. Um, I, I really make sure that I'm able to focus on my family in a way that I, I'm not being bogged down with all that stuff that stresses you out. So running in the errands, running to the market, picking up the dry cleaning. I have found a way to, you know, when my kids couldn't drive and had to be at this practice and that practice, I could focus on, on creating dinners with them and, and cooking and being there for Eloise to help in the kitchen. And I would have other people doing those things. And really, I would find these great girls that were um, babysitters and you know uh, in high school that needed extra gas money, and they would do all those errands. And then I had the time to focus on the business, focus on Bo. Then when go, I could go pick up the kids and be like, hey, you know, and not all stressed out running a million different directions. And then we'd have family time because we weren't out running around. Um, or I could be with the girls or with Lila because Axel and Bo were off at practice. So if you can find someone like that, it doesn't have to be some like crazy expensive assistant. Just learn to create 
lists for them, to teach them. They will learn so much from that experience and you will get a little bit of relief from all that mom stuff that you know we always have to be doing and or think that we always have to be doing. I think that's the biggest lesson, right? Like we don't have to be doing all that stuff. So um, that's been just great uh, for, I think for me to be successful at what I do and really continue to support Bo in the business and be a great mom. So um, Todd, where are we with questions? We, we have a few. Um, do you want Let to me start? Know. That was like 20 minutes there. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, well, we could do some questions and then I can get back to some stuff. So just see if we have any. Um, yeah. The other thing too that uh, is really important, I love this because Bo just trained on this, um, it's called strategic ignorance. And it's strategic, so Ben Hardy just, it's from Ben Hardy's book and Bo just talked about this, but I love, um, I love what, I love strategic ignorance, right? And what that means is being, being really strategic about what you're shielding yourself from and your family from. So it's about not putting your kids in those situations where they're hearing negativity, their dreams are being just smashed, you know, uh, you know, those, the, the parents, the people that just have like nothing good to say. And trust me, we've been on some of those teams and in those environments and we're like, we're leaving. This is not happening. This is not what we, this is not how we want our kids to, to the environment we want them to be in. It's not okay. And we're going to take you out of there. Uh, you know, just like all the media that's going on, on around all the, the noise and the coronavirus and the fear tactics. It's like, shut that all out because what, if you can be strategically ignorant to those things, then you can focus on your dreams, build an environment where you're not distracted by that, where you're not like carrying that around with you and your kids too. So think about that. Who are they hearing from? What negativity is coming in that's either stopping them or discouraging them that you can you can protect. So it's your job to protect them from that. And you know whether you know I'm just I'm seeing a little bit of it with Lila on on some of the social media stuff she's on on her phone and it's like I'd like her to be a lot like I, I'd like to block that out because I see it. I see how it affects her. And she's at a very, you know, uh, challenging age as a sixth grader, a middle schooler. Um, it's a, it's, it's, she, you know, I said, I'm, I'm not happy how things are going with the phone and I want to take it away. And I, I, I love who you are without the phone. And then she's like, oh my gosh, you're going to ruin my life. <laughs> she goes, I, that is my communication to, that's the only, that she goes, oh, I forgot. She goes, that's, that's how I communicate with the entire world, mom. <laughs> it's like. Okay, and then she brought up coronavirus. She goes, there's coronavirus in the shutdown. That's my only, you know, that's the only way I know what's happening in the world. I'm like, maybe you don't need to know what's happening in the world. So anyway, it's just um, really like catching those things before they go down a road that isn't, um, isn't productive for them. So uh, I think that's really critical and that strategic ignorance is great. And um, I, it's, I, Ben Hardy talks about it in his new book. Uh, what is it? Personality isn't, I forgot the name of the title of his, his new book. Oh, that one was. Personality. Uh, Willpower Doesn't Work. Well, no, that's his first one. Willpower Doesn't Work is great. And then he has a new one, but I'm sure Gina can put it in the chat. Um, so yeah, let's open it up to some questions if, if you guys have some and, uh, and we'll start there. All right, so BB has a question. She says, what's, what's your hardest role in supporting Bo? What tests you most? Hmm, that's BB? Yeah. Okay, thanks BB. Um, what is my hardest role in supporting Bo? I would say, you know, probably really protecting his energy. So I am super social and will go to any party and want to be out all day. And that's, that doesn't help Bo. So when Bo's not that way, um, he's more an introvert. Uh, he really likes time to prepare. He needs recovery time. Uh, so 
I've, I've kind of noticed that we've really kind of fallen into a pattern which supports him um, as a performer, but then we don't, I don't necessarily have all the social outlets that I love. So I have to just, you know, I can't be making like all these social plans and barbecues and dinners, which I used to entertain a lot because we really need, I don't, I don't ever know what Bo needs to be in preparation for. Like it might be coming up the following week. He needs that time. And I really have to protect that time. So I would say that I probably miss a little bit of that, but I, I try to find it outside of like maybe couples or family or things that we do. I'll, I'll go with my girlfriends or plan special trips with my mom and my sister or hang out with Eloise. We'll go to a restaurant. Um, but that's probably been the most challenging. I love everything else. We're just completely on the same page creatively. Um, maybe it's getting harder with the kids getting older to find time to connect. So a lot of times it's like, hey, babe, check this out. Okay, I got to run over here. You know, um, we don't have as much time, especially right now with everybody home uh, doing online school. So I like when we just have that that alone time where we really get to create. And I think that's more limited right now. So that's a bit of a challenge. A follow up to that is what's been uh, what have you done together that's been the most fun? Was it the book? Was it the play, your events? Hmm. I think our events are probably the most fun. Uh, we love being live in the theater. And it's like the minute that event starts, we're going nonstop. Um, but it's fun to share the stories at the end of the night and go, oh my gosh, that went well, or what happened with that? And so-and-so did that and kind of talk about all the, you know, live events are just, um, something's always happening backstage in front of stage. So, um, you know, that's been, I think the live events have been really, really fun. Um, we love creating just this amazing experience for the attendees and, it's just fun to do that together. So, and then, and we're kind of in that mode right now, right? We have the the three day next week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and we're just like, boom, like, what do we do? Move this, do that, bring this person in. Oh, who would be great for this? And it's just fun to be, we love that creativity. I think that's our favorite thing. Um, Franklin asks, how do you separate being Bo's right hand gal versus his <laughs> wife? How do you make it work? I think it's just all one. I think when people try to compartmentalize things and be like, well, I'm working and I'm his wife. So sometimes the kids get annoyed because they're like, you're always talking about work. Um, so it, I have to make a conscious effort to turn that off. Uh, Bo's a lot better at that than I am. I think just because I do more logistics stuff. So I feel like it's like boom, 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 boom. And I have to like get, get him, uh, get on the same page with him. Uh, but, I think, you know, that it's, it's, we're, it's, I'm a mom, I'm a, I'm a wife, I run the business, you know, I, it's all, it's all one. There's no, I'm not like trying to separate it out. So I think that's what, um, what probably helps me the most. And I think people try to keep everything separate and our kids are completely immersed in our business completely immersed in our relationship and our marriage. They see they see us every day. We're sharing, we're talking, we're communicating. Um, so I, I very just transparent. You know, one of the things I had and I and I haven't talked about this, but I'm uh, like a hundred percent that this has been huge for our family. And someone told us to do this years ago. And this is part of like the kids and all of us being together and really seeing seeing our our dreams and our vision and how we live we have been committed and probably one of the biggest things in our family is dinner time like we have been committed to sitting down together as a family for dinner since they were little and now that they're growing up and i look at the dinner table and i look around whether we're out you know even going to dinner going to a nice restaurant we all go together you know, maybe it's date night and we're like, hey, Axe, you want to come? And it's just, you know, the three of us. So, or it's just Bo and I, and then we love when it's just the two of us. But that time for our family is really, really important and very sacred to us. And it's something that the kids look forward to and love. So, and even as they become teenagers. So I feel like that's been really a place for us to connect and 
share what we're all going through. And it's not like we go around the table and we're like, how was your day? <laughs> so it's just, you know, sit outside, you know, we've got the candles lit. I'm having a glass of wine. They know I love my wine. Uh, we, Eloise is cooking. So it's just, it's an important time for my family. And I think that helps kind of just make it like, like I said, not separating everything. We're all one, we're all together. They're hearing different things about our business, about our life, about our dreams, about Axel's training, about Eloise, Lila, and that all that, all that happens at the dinner table. Tim wants to know, how do you know if you're more of a Don or a Bo? You can restate the question. Oh, how do you know if you're a Don or a Bo? Um, well, you know, and it's funny because I... I was an actress. That's how Bo and I met. We met in acting class. So my team always laughs because I'm like, oh gosh, like today I was like, I have to go on camera. <laughs> like, I hate that. So I never loved acting and performing. Um, I grew up doing it since I was 12, but I just don't, I love like being behind the camera. I would get in trouble all the time as an actress because I was, I like couldn't keep my mouth shut. I'm like, I, what's going on? We're running late. Like what? You know, when they tell me what time I had to be there, I'd like argue with them. I'm like, I'm not coming at nine, I'll come at 9.30. So like, that does not work as a performer. And Bo, on the other hand, as an actor, he would do like anything they said. He was like, okay, you know, he's so used to being on a team, I think, and from the NFL that he just loves just getting in there and playing full out. And I just, I'm too controlling to get in there and play full out. I just, I wanna like, you know, uh, I wanna run the show. And I think, um, Bo saw that in me um, at a very young age. We met um, when we met, I was 19, and he really encouraged that in me. He saw that in me, and I had other people around me that saw that skill in me, and they and instead of me thinking, oh, I'm just supposed to go on and continue to be an actress because that's what I look like I'm supposed to be, and that's what I've done since I was 12 they saw something in me that, that just, I, that lit up when I was, you know, finding opportunities, pitching the play, raising money. And it just, because, you know, that's what happened when Bo and I got married, we just, we naturally found those roles to be the right for us, right, right roles for us. So I think you have to say, what are you drawn to? Where do you like just feel at home. Where is there no noise, no negativity, no insecurity? Um, and I had a lot of that as an actress, but none of that as a producer and making calls, making decisions and running the show. And uh, so I think that's a, a good way to, to check that out. Um, how do you learn to be so confident about talking about your impact on Bo and your family? Uh, my default answer is no, I haven't done anything special. Instead, acknowledging the work and time that I spent supporting the family, same issue for me at work. Can you simplify that a little bit? <laughs> so, um, How do I find the confidence to yeah, share what I do? To talk about your impact on Bo and the family instead of always just giving them the spotlight. She's basically, she's saying you seem confident sharing everything. Your team. Yeah, that you're doing it, your different roles and stuff. Um, I think because I just see, you know, I just, I don't mind like sharing how it's going and being perfectly honest about ups and downs and things we're struggling with. I think Bo and I are both that way. Um, so it makes it easy to to share if I'm not worried whether like we're succeeding or not succeeding or one of the kids is struggling. I'm like, I kind of tell everyone everything. <laughs> so I sometimes the kids are like, mom, can you not do that? Or I was like, Don, please don't repeat that. Um, so I think it's just who I am. I love, I, I will, I'll just tell everyone everything and I probably get in trouble for that more than I should. <laughs> so maybe that's where the confidence comes from. The, um, this is from Patricia. She says, how do you avoid all the negative minis? Like uh, you know, yeah. business, whether it's positivity, negativity. I really protect Bo from that more than I protect myself. So, you know, it's important when you have a performer, you cannot let that negativity 
like come anywhere near them. So it's hard. I mean, no one likes to hear anything negative um, or, you know, I, I think you just, I think in the end, like once I keep it from Bo and it's kind of gone beyond where it would affect him, say, say there's some negativity coming up and it's upsetting me. I don't share it with him till we get beyond whatever that performance is. Um, or, or say we do the event and there's, there's, we hear something. I don't share that with them till we have some time. So like a week or two weeks. Um, but I think I usually end up talking to Bo about that. He's so great at realizing what, like or reminding me of the path that we're on and the vision that we're on. So I do need to talk that out with someone. Um, and actually for Bo, he's, you know, he, he, we, we have this amazing therapist that we've seen since, um, and it's a really important part of our marriage. And I always encourage people that, you know, even we, we saw therapists when everything was perfect. So we've never not seen anyone. So I think having that chance to check in now with the kids having things that come up and not knowing how to handle it and just being able to check in with someone has been great. So Bo really, he uses that, that every week. Um, to get past that negativity and to understand how to best support the kids, best support Axel and his dreams and his vision. Um, Bo's really competitive, so it's a hard place for him to be um, as, a, as a father and being on the field and being in those competitive situations. So hearing negativity there is challenging. So really having somebody I think to talk to is important. I go to Bo when the time is right, and then Bo has somebody every week that he talks to, and of course I check in with uh, when we need it. Uh, so this will be our last question. Okay, So last what's question. been the biggest challenge in adapting all your live events to the virtual stage? Yeah, that's a good question. I think all the technical stuff, I think yeah, the, the oh, they, they, they said, um, uh, what is your biggest challenge adapting. adapting our live events to virtual? Um, so a couple things. One is, I mean, I think Bo's great on camera and I'm sure you guys agree. And he's had a lot of training there. Um, he didn't love it. He loves live events. So for all these years, our team has been like trying to get him in the studio more, more comfortable, just like holding up his phone and shooting videos. So I have to say, this has really pushed him over the edge. <laughs> it's like in a good way, like what he can't say no, like this is all we got, like we don't have people. So um, that's been great. And I think a lot of the technical stuff I think has been a little challenging, just the learning curve, making sure everyone's on the same page, not being able to like control the technical, the Wi-Fi, learning how to how to do all this stuff and Todd and I have just been like in there figuring it out and he's been great. Um, we've got like a whole studio now that's just locked down, <laughs> nothing moves. Um, so that's been one of the hardest things. And then there's, you know, it's actually a lot harder than in-person events. You're getting so much energy from the audience. And like I said, I, I'm very social. I love our live events. I love our VIP dinners. I love like being around people. Um, so it's hard to not have that. And I, I really miss that. Um, but it's pretty cool, like the opportunities that virtual is providing for a lot of our, our friends in, in, in the business, how well they're doing. Um, I think how we've been able to connect on a more consistent basis because the camera's here, the audience is here. They're all over the world now. And that has been really um, inspiring. And I think it's it's helped Bo just feel more comfortable and more like excited about virtual, right? Like, look at who you can connect with. Look how you can share what's inside of you. Um, and he really needs that. And I, and I see that in him. So we've always said, you know, if he doesn't have a stage, he doesn't have run to the litter, he doesn't have a place and an audience, he's usually just telling like me and the kids and we're like, okay, Bo, <laughs> that's enough. So to, so I'm like, look, you can get in front of a camera, you can turn your computer on and go to Zoom, you can do a live, you can share all that's inside of you. And there's people that wanna listen that will just become better for it. So 
it's uh, it's giving him a real outlet, and and I know as a performer and a creator, he needs that. So I think that's been actually like another blessing from this whole uh, this whole shutdown. It's taught it's taught us that we can connect anytime and anywhere, really. So um, I'm going to leave you guys with a challenge. I want to know who's fighting for you, right? So everything that I've shared today. Uh, who is that person? And if you if you haven't found that person that's fighting for you, then just know the better you get at that story, the better and the more clear you are with your vision, that person's going to show up. I wasn't necessarily, I wasn't fighting for Bo's career as an actor. I was not fighting for Bo's career as an actor. I was not his agent. I was not making calls for him. The minute he had a vision for himself and for his life and for the story, is when I started showing up every day and I never looked back. So I want you to remember that that is the number one thing that you need to get a dawn is your story and your vision being crystal, crystal clear. So I'd love to hear that in the chat. Who's fighting for you? Leave it in the comments below. Um, it's been so fun spending this time with you and I'm, I'm excited all week prepping for the three day next week, the three day virtual. Again, uh, if you're gonna be there with us, I can't wait. Um, and if anyone's interested too, our, our team has more information. I, I, the good thing is, is virtual has like as many seats as you need, right? <laughs> it's another good thing. So we have spots. If anyone wants to attend, don't miss it and uh, it'll be great. All right, thanks guys.